rolling. Um, so I'm going to show you really quick just the first steps to collar conditioning your puppy. Um, this is my hunting dog, Camus. She thinks we're going to go hunting right now because um, she's at the stage now where she doesn't wear her training, her electronic training collar anymore. She doesn't need it. Um, if you do it correctly, that's the end goal. You don't need to have it on them all the time. And they don't have to listen to it all the time. And so the, the main thing is making sure that um, for the next couple of weeks, you don't just put the collar on when you want to train. Um, they wear it every day while you're at home. It's part of their everyday attire while they're in training until they no longer need the collar um, at all. And then you can start to take it off. Um, and some dogs need a reminder. But the I, reason why you want them wearing it every day is you don't want a dog that becomes what's called collar-wise, that knows that they only have to listen when they're wearing their training collar. Um, that kind of defeats the purpose. So, uh, they wear their collar until you don't need it. Um, I just put this one on Camus. I had to turn it on. It's a little different brand than yours, but you'll get the technique, the idea behind what you're doing. That's what's important. So, let me turn mine on here. Make sure I'm on the right dog because this collar allows me to program. I use multiple dogs. Okay, so first things first. Um, and Camus wants treats and attention, that's why she's pawing me. So I don't know if you noticed when I put the collar on. Um, that collar sits pretty much right behind the dog's ears the back of their head. You want it kind of as far forward on their neck as possible because if I put the collar, can yes. come here. Good girl, can you turn? Good, sit. If I put the collar down where her normal collar sits, this flat collar, um, her neck, all dogs, their necks are a little bigger and what will happen is the collar will work its way forward and then it doesn't fit correctly and then your dog doesn't feel the vibration very well. Um, so with the vibration, the nice thing is, is you don't need to have the collar as snug as you would if it were a normal e-collar, you were using the static stimulation. This is just a hair loose. But you do want it kind of snug. The dog has to feel the box against their neck. So don't, you don't want it flopping around. Plus, if it's shaking around, it sometimes causes skin problems and rubs the hair off. So you do want it a little, you know, up against the skin. Not snug, but you should be able to feel that collar touching your dog. Okay, you ready? Yes, good girl. All right, so this first step, all you're going to do is you, with your collar, since it's a different brand, I believe you can adjust the vibration to different levels on yours. Uh, if not, you're just going to use the vibration uh, that came with the collar, but the lowest setting, if it has any sort of adjustability. You want the lowest level your dog can feel, okay? Once you've made sure that the collar's on your dog, the collar's turned on, and you've got the remote on, we're going to get some really high value treats, more than your average training treat. So cheese, meat, a nice jerky treat, um, works well. These are new, so she's kind of intrigued by these. Now she's already been through this process, so she's going to be a bit calmer than what you're, you might see, okay? So what I'm going to do is... Um, I want to link the expectation of food and praise with the collar, okay? So I'm going to tap the vibration button on my collar, and I just hit it, and all you could see on Camus, I don't even know if you saw it on the camera, her right ear twitched back. That was it. And as soon as I hit the button and recognized that she felt it, I gave her a treat. That's all you're going to do for about a week, okay? You want 90 repetitions of this. So you're gonna go vibrate, treat. Good girl. Vibrate, treat. Now you saw for a while there, Camus was really kind of, and even now she's kind of holding her tail down. That's not stress in this dog. She holds her tail down inside, like that. Vibrate, treat. And I've actually conditioned her to stimulus, so vibration is different for her. Treat. It's a little more scary. Now you see how I'm tossing the treat? That is to get the dog moving, especially if your dog has a, a bit more of a physical response. So with your dog, when she feels the vibration, she should just kind of look around like, what, what is that? 
Um, and then you're just going to give her a treat and act like nothing happened and act super excited. And she's going to gradually go, oh, I'm okay. This doesn't hurt me. And I get treats. Oh, this is kind of cool. Um, if for some reason you hit the vibrate and you see her kind of go and cower and tuck her tail or startle, what I want you to do is just kind of um, fake it a little bit. <laughs> do a fake tap treat and just get her moving around. And don't tap it every time. You'll just tap it one out of every three repetitions. So what I mean by that is you'll go, I'm not actually hitting the button. I'm going to pretend to treat. Now I'm tapping treat. Pretend tap treat. And you can see I can get the dog moving and she's pretty relaxed. I mean, her tail's still tucked, but that's this that's normal for this dog inside. She's bored. Hi, what's up? Sit. Yes. Um, so you're looking to see how your dog reacts, the level of stress to this vibrate. And how your dog reacts depends on how you progress forward. So obviously this dog doesn't care too much, so I can go out and start to use the collar now with this dog. With Mackie, I recommend at least 60 repetitions of the vibrate treat. And you want to be seeing her kind of freely moving around and acting like it's no big deal before we move on to the next step. Um, that should be all the information you need for this first step. Let me know if you have any other questions. Can I sit? Good girl. Yes. And I can definitely help you with the next step because that's quite a bit more involved and complicated. But this one, I think you can do inside. Um, the other ones, they have to be done outside and it's really problematic when it's raining because a lot of times the dogs don't really want to explore their environment as much in the rain. Let me know if you have any questions, okay? Sit. Good girl. Sit.